Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today number 33 of this current series focusing on Southern California eating establishments. This particular place has well over a thousand, maybe even closer to two thousand locations, but the one I'm going to be going to over in Anaheim sits just outside the Disneyland gates. Just right there. You just exit the park, get yourself a snack or a meal and go back in. And it's one of the only things on that block currently that is open. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? I'm gonna be taking the bike out for a spin, so I'm gonna load everything up in the backpack, get a little exercise. I'm also gonna to try to eat moderately healthy today. Let's see if I can stick to it. I chose this spot for a couple of different reason. reasons. Reasons. The, pl the, pl the plural of reason. The uniqueness of where I'm heading isn't necessarily the exterior or the historical significance, but because of its precise location, as I mentioned a moment ago. Also, we'll be chiming in a little bit about an announcement that was made earlier last week. Well, last week, we give about a few days ago to a week ago, that the Disney California parks are now going to be reopening and have officially set a date. I'll be talking about that and another thing that's in the neighborhood just up here that was postponed a couple of years that I'll be mentioning in while I eat my meal we'll be discussing that. We are just about a month away to the day of things starting to reopen here. Well I mean some places already are. Take a look at that. They're working on the electrical LCD board right there. It is a real beehive of activity over there. July 17th is when the parks here on Harbor Boulevard will once again rear their head about four weeks, give or take. And I'm kind of leaning towards and hoping that some of the other eateries here along the thoroughfare will also reopen prior to that, maybe a week or two before the cross streets of Disney Way and Harbor. We're getting kind of a bird's eye from this little placard embedded in the ground. And just across from where I am, take a look at that. We'll be plummeting soon enough. They were cones. A lot of these hotels will be back and other, other little places along the way here. I'm also ready for. This will all be for posterity and something we can look back on because in the future, it won't be like this. There will be a lot more traffic on the streets. Here it is, dining room now open. I am, however, gonna get it to go. A little takeout. This ice cream stand. They used to, when you would go in there, you could ask those who were scooping out your ice cream, they would sing you Disney songs. Not kidding. I've requested it a few times. One thing that separates the West Coast from its Florida counterpart is that the monorail normally runs right along this street. You can see it from outside the premises. There it goes. No. Monorail. If they have this thing running, even though we can't board it necessarily due to restrictions when it first reopens, it would be pretty dang sweet if just for visual purposes it was cruising up and down that railing just to give a little proximity some coordinates there's the Denny's right there with all its a lot of signage out there alerting everyone here is the rideshare pickup area which is normally bustling with lots of cars and there is the entrance pretty dang close right
even though they do have indoor seating, there also is a little stand that says order and pick up here. So I'm guessing someone will come out. You know, that way you don't have to go inside. And then while you wait, you got a couple seats here that you can just hang out on. And a menu board outside. So really you don't even have to go in at all if you so choose. Showing both lunch and breakfast items here along this. They have 100% beef burgers. They have savory omelets. They have seafood and steaks. I'm looking for a salad. I'm hoping, I wanted to get a salad, a large salad, a couple, of, a couple bottles of water. But I don't see this on this particular menu board. No one's walking outside, so I went ahead and locked up the bike. I'm gonna go in and order and then come back out here and wait. Went ahead and placed my order while inside. I noticed they had, you know, some stuffed figurines when it comes to the Disney characters and little trinkets like keychains and whatnot. I mean, it makes sense because it's just, it's right next door. A to-go menu just to show what I ordered. So there is a, there are salad options on here. Below the pot roast melt is the house salad and I added on some additional things. I believe I got some chicken on top of there. I'm not sure if it's gonna be fried or grilled. Find out when it is finished as well as avocados. From where I'm standing, if I shift this direction, Space Mountain. Oh, someone's yelling way off in the distance. Probably another half a couple few hundred yards to the opposite side. Nowhere near where the camera is pointed. Someone is really, whoa, someone's angry. They just brought my food out. It's time to eat, or at least ride over to a place to to eat. A couple blocks away, not far. Just noticed, didn't see that before, but they got the streamers there going across between the trees. If you don't realize this place is open, you're not paying attention. <laughs> it is very prominent. You know, I've never been around to this section. Okay, they have a little painting here, a little mural. Good parking, good eating, and good weather. Oh yeah, this is cool back here. This is really good to know. Two hour parking, you see it etched there on the ground. A little stained glass. Wow, there's a stained glass window back here. According to that bag, if you want Denny's, you need to demand it. There goes no monorail for now. Not just for now, it's just, it's just temporary. Okay, I'm taking this path through the hedges here. Oops. I almost bypassed it and get, didn't get the, the photo op. You gotta get the photo op here. There it is, nailed it. Soon, very soon. A plane was flying over and I almost thought it was the monorail. I'm so used to always listening and searching for the monorail, but it wasn't. But it will be again soon. Oh, this is very good news. This is the Anaheim Walk of Fame. They're moving it back over here. A couple weeks ago, I noticed that they had taken them away from their entrance. I thought they were discarding of them, but nope. They're making them into a different spot. They were out of bottles of water, which are really simple to carry on the bicycle. So opted to go into 7-Eleven to get one. It's gonna be so different when conventions start happening again. And I remember this section 
all the times I've stopped off here when it's like this. Now here's an interesting footnote. The Anaheim Arena, which is connected to the convention center. Check out the opening date, month and day, July 17th, not 55 like Disneyland was, but 67. Now that's interesting. The futuristic looking structure that I'm pedaling away from. Well, I'm not pedaling, I'm just kind of cruising away from. A lot of memories I've had here. Everything from VidCon to D23 to Star Wars Celebration, which as of yesterday, as a recording of this, yesterday they announced was not happening this year. Tickets sold out 13 months in advance to when it was gonna happen. We just gotta wait till 2022, which means next year, I think next year, D23, 2021, and then the following year. Will be celebration. We must be patient. Oh, that's a lot. And this is what we're dealing with. Oh, they put the, the cutlery and salt and pepper, little packets of salt and pepper and Oh, that's the ranch dressing for the salad inside this separate, almost looks like a little, little snack bag and encased in this plastic, almost see-through. Yeah, you can kind of get a little hint there of what's happening. Oh, I can already see the delectable fresh goodness of the veggies. Yes. I, it's been a while since I've had something other than a burger or pizza or, you know, well, obviously anyone that's been following along with this series knows what I have been consuming. I wasn't going to get it with the chicken. I got to like kind of sway it out. I'm, I'm tilting it so I can kind of sway it out and get it be more presentable. Oh yeah, this is good. We got the, the little teeny tiny tomatoes, croutons. I almost exited the establishment without saying, hey, can I get some chicken on that? They charged me a little bit extra for the chicken. And right down in here, got some avocados, cucumbers. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put the ranch on it and go for it. Soothing sounds of the fountain in the background. Ranch is my go-to. I do like other types of dressings, but ranch is definitely my, I am lathering this. Oh, that might be a little too much. It's okay though, it's a salad. It's good stuff. As stated, Star Wars Celebration is not happening. It was going to be the very, the tail end of August. It's not happening, 2020 Celebration. has been moved. And that's understandable. There's a lot going on right now. And because it was a sold out, it was a sold out event, how would you space everything? No pun intended. Space, Star Wars Celebration. That is understandable. Brings me to the next point. Theme parks, especially Disneyland, which is right over there. The salad is pretty good. Pretty typical.
Look at that beautiful thing. Mm, yeah. It's tasty. A lot of people, friends, family, viewers have asked, will you be going on opening day? To be honest, yes. But there, that is a myriad of reasons why on July 17th, if I get a reservation, if I can get in, that I will be there. I must state this. I love what Walt Disney has created. Followed the man's career. Love the theme parks. I love the idea of Disneyland, the history, which is nothing new. I'm not expressing anything new to anyone who has been you know, following along here on this platform, the, the channel. I've been to Marceline, where he grew up. I've been to Kansas City, where Laugh-A-Gram is. I'm a coast-to-coast -coast pass holder, meaning I can go to Florida all the time. I can go here anytime, other than the, you know, the current climate. I closed out Walt Disney World, which Disneyland here, I, I was in Florida, had no plans on doing a lot of content at the parks there. And then all of a sudden, you know, I did a few. I did opening a runaway railway. I did a DVC event that my friend Jamie invited me to. So I filmed that and documented that. And then I was like, I'm just going to kind of not really put a lot of videos out in the parks. And then all of a sudden, there was this rumor that the Disney World complex was going to close. Mmm. Glad I got that chicken. That's pretty good. Pretty good chicken. Right there. Yeah, I'm gonna try to mix that in a little bit more. It's almost like a two-part type of deal. I love going to theme parks. And let me express that. I am more of a theme park person more than an amusement park and a thrill ride type of park, for example. I like occasional coasters, but I am not really a coaster guy. I like theming. I like walking down Main Street, I like going into Frontierland, Knott's Berry Farm, I like going through Ghost Town. That is what I love. I love dark rides, slow moving, I'm on a boat, and I'm going around, there's animatro animatronics around me. That is my, that's my passion, that's what I love, that's what I enjoy, my favorite things. So when Walt Disney World announced their closures, which is the 13th of that month, seems like so long ago. It was the day before that. Disneyland was going to close on the 13th, which happened to be Friday the 13th. For whatever reason, the East Coast, probably because there were some people staying in the resorts who had traveled internationally and from across the country, as opposed to out here, they were given a few more days. So I was able to go the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th? I don't think the 16th. The 5th, so I got two extra days. So. I was able to kind of lead up to it and do the different parks, closing it out at Epcot on the final day and Magic Kingdom in the morning Epcot and then at night for the final kiss goodnight at Magic Kingdom. And I'm glad I did it. Looking back, I have that documented and it's in my brain. And I'm also, I kind of battle with, do I want to go somewhere just because I want to go? Or do I want to go somewhere? Well, it's hard, it's hard. Let, me, let me try to clarify that a little more. Do I want to go somewhere, let's say the reopening of a theme park, for my own curiosity to see what it's going to be like? Or is there some sort of documentary in? Doc, am I a documentarianist? Am I a documentarian? In a way. Which I think I am. But I, don't, I don't like to put words in my own mouth, but there are things that I have done that I feel others have looked back on. So, should I go for that reason? And I'm excited. Now, Universal Studios has not announced today. As of the recording, this Universal Studios has not announced today. Hollywood has not announced today yet. Nor Knott's Berry Farm or Six Flags. There are some hard rumors that those might be happening soon. 
there is a good chance I will not be at those establishments on opening day. I might wait. I might just wait a few. Just till the things to simmer down as far as crowds. I can watch others who have gone. I can check social media and just see, you know, what the vibe is like, what the crowds are like. So those establishments, I am really on the fence with not going to on the first day, maybe not even the first few days to a week. City Walk has already reopened. And I want to get up there, check it out, but I have not yet. Now, Disney, that's a whole other ball game. And they really threw kind of a monkey wrench in my thought process, in my brain, by announcing the opening day on July 17th, which is the 65th anniversary of the Anaheim Park, the original waltz. Original Magic Kingdom, which for those of you who do not know, if you watch old films, a lot of the early anniversary specials before 1971 when Florida opened its secondary coast parks. Disneyland was referred to as the Magic Kingdom a heck of a lot if you go back through and watch a lot of that, that old footage, but I digress. Since the announced opening day, I'm not sure if they'll have a pass holder preview. I'm not sure if they will have any sort of soft opening. If they don't, and all the ticket holders and annual pass holders are allowed in there, even with the reservation system, a bird just went by, on July 17th, if I can get a reservation, I would love to be there for this reason. There is a good chance. Well, let me talk about the reason. It's the anniversary. It's the 65th. Every year since the 60th, which was five years ago, I have been in there on Main Street USA to just to say thank you for this amazing place that has been created. Uh, a source of happiness to so many people. Now, if the day... You know, this is, I'm talking out loud. This is all just me speaking, thinking what I'm saying and kind of just spewing it out into the air. I'm not spewing too much though, because you know in these times, you don't want to do too much spewing. If for some reason there were soft openings, let's say on the 15th or the 16th and capacity was 50%, I can't, I don't know if I would go. I don't know if I would go there on the 15th or the 16th. I might. But I'm leaning towards maybe, if I had a choice, let's say opening day, let's say they soft open on the 14th or the 15th or the 16th, which hasn't, they have not stated this, but if they do, I don't know if I would go. I would rather wait, and if I could get a reservation on the 17th, three or four days after that, you know, in my mind, the supposed, if anything else happens, I would rather be there on the 17th. I don't even have to be there at rope drop. I don't even have to be there lined up with the scaled back masses walking in. I could even show up in the evening. You know, they might even cut the hours back and not be open late, but even if I just went in there for an hour and could walk down Main Street, I don't even have to go on an attraction or a ride. I don't even have to see a character. I just really want to be in the park on July 17th of this year for the 65th anniversary. So there's that, and then there's the documentation aspect of it. Because when we look forward 10 years, five years, two years, 20 years, it would be nice to look back and say, I was there for the reopening of my favorite park. It'd be pretty fantastic. But times are strange. Times are unusual. I have been keeping to myself a lot. I have been meeting up occasionally with friends for this series in very small numbers. You know, I might even go to a, a place that has a huge conglomeration of people, even though it won't be full capacity. I might think, I don't really feel comfortable being here. That might happen. It's really tough to tell until I experience it. 
But for now, I'm just doing this. Not really, I'm not really too overly excited about other parks reopening. I, it will be nice to be able to go back and visit Knott's and Universal. This is starting to get really filling. Wow. Yeah, this is starting to, I should probably scatter around those little miniature tomatoes there. I am going to be full after eating this. A good kind of full. So just to reiterate and clarify, when things happen, they will happen. I am not pushing for anything. I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to, as soon as something is available, to be there with bells on. My opinion could change, but for now, a month out, well, less than a month out, hypothetically, based on some rumors. Or the other parks. I didn't really want to go off on a tan tangent about the other parks. I really wanted to focus on Disneyland. I want to be at Disneyland on the 17th. I want to be there. If I can't get in, if I cannot get a reservation, my pass at the moment. So this is another side note. There are a lot of annual pass holders in California. I heard a few years ago, now I cannot confirm or deny this, but I heard that in California alone, that there are one and a half million annual pass holders for Disneyland. If I am way off base on that, I would like to know. Because I could. That sounds like a high number, but at the same time, that sounds like a low number. Getting a reservation might be tough, even at 30, 40, 20, even at 50% park capacity on the 17th. If I cannot get in on the 17th, I might wait a little while. I might wait a week before I go. I might not jump in there on the 18th or the 19th because the anniversary that, you know, the historic moment of being in there would have passed and I could just kind of play it by ear. But if there is the opportunity to be in there on July 17th at any time of the day, I've already made my, I've already made my, my thoughts known. Two thousand and twenty. I'm loving this series. I am really, really loving this series. I'll tell you why. In a way, it kind of saved me. I was really kind of racking my brain on what I was going to do. Not a lot of things were open. I'm always tempted to travel and get in the car and go. I mean, honestly, I've been looking at flights to consider going to Florida. I didn't know if I want to get on a plane. I didn't know if I want to rent a car and drive cross country. You know, just uncertainty abounds. So this is going out and doing local establishment. I say local, but you know, within an hour of where I am, going up to LA, greater LA area in Orange County. Everything's very spread out. But I'm learning a lot about the cityscape, you know, where little suburbs and whatnot are. And it, get, it helps me be creative, stay creative, and I know maybe it's run its course, but I'm staying the course on this. And I do have, well I'm really kind of unveiling a lot here, I do have a date in mind for this to end. I do have a number in my head to stop this, you know, on running series. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe. By doing so, it helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future uploads here on this channel. Someone just went by on a golf cart. They didn't see me over here hiding in the shrubs. 
Well, they didn't even look. They probably know I'm here. If you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. Did I mention to ring that notif- wrote, did I ring- did I say to mention- did I mention to ring the notification- Bell? Ring that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Mmm. You can't do this, the parks aren't open, when the parks open, you can't really do this as easily in Florida. You can't exit out into the Esplanade, walk a hundred yards to an establishment that has nothing to do with the company, get a meal, feed your face, fill your tummy, and go back in within a matter of moments and be in the Tiki Room or riding Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or being on the Astro Orbiter. It's a little more difficult in Florida. I'll see you in the next video. Avocado, anyone? The vlog. Is over. Tomato incoming.